Good morning, everyone. My name is Carla, and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but other crafts that I'm involved in, and a little bit of life thrown in. This is Bagheera, my kitty, who was meowing at me right before I got on camera, so I figured I'd pick him up because that seems to satisfy him for a few minutes while I'm kind of doing my intro, and then he will go away and go take a nap. <laughs> Um, so today is Sunday. It's June 20th. This is my 98th floss tube video. Um, welcome. If you are new here, then, um, thank you so much for coming by. I hope you like what you see and want to hit like and subscribe. Okay. I need to move forward a little bit because of this whole stupid ring light thing. I'm still working on it, you guys. I've been saying that every week for the last uh, several weeks that I'm trying to figure out the whole ring light thing and I don't know why all of a sudden it's an issue, but I was thinking that maybe it has something to do with just the time of year, you know? When I started doing my floss tube videos um, two years ago, which was right around this time of year, um, I didn't have a ring light. Uh, the ring light makes the lighting much better for my, um, stitching, but it does then uh, reflect in the glasses and it's a big, you know, drama every week <laughs> for me to figure out what I'm doing because I need my glasses to see my notes. So, so anyway, um, welcome. As I said, if you are new, thank you for much stopping by. If you are a returning subscriber and you come every week to spend time with me, thank you so much for coming. You know, I love spending this time with you. Um, I said today is my 98th floss tube video, which I think is kind of funny because um, 100, 100 videos seems like a milestone. You know, we like those those round numbers. So next week will be 99, and the week after that, which would normally be 100, is when I'm leaving for vacation. So um, it's kind of funny. I think that my actual 100th floss tube video will have to happen, you know, after I get back from vacation. And um, it may be my vacation vlog floss tube extra thing. So, although I don't number those the same, so I don't know. I, anyway, I just think it's kind of funny because I'm actually going on vacation. It will be actually um, two, no, I guess next week would actually be my two year sort of anniversary because I did my first video um, the week before the weekend before 4th of July, and I believe 4th of July was a Thursday or Friday that year. Um, I only know that because my second video I did on the 5th, and it was a holiday day. Um, so, but my first video was like that, Saturday before the 4th of July. Um, it's kind of cool. I've been doing this for two years now. Um, and I do have to say, I'm so glad I started it. If you are on the fence about whether or not to do a plus two videos, um, do it. It's fun. Um, it really kind of gives my week a little bit of structure as far as stitching. It, uh, gives my stitching, um, you know, I, I tend to stay a little bit more focused with my stitching, um, but in a fun way. I, it never feels like a chore or a job. It's just fun and I have people to share it with, so I'm excited to do it each week. And doing FrostTube is a wonderful thing, and it's a great community, and I've made a lot of friends through FrostTube, friends that I've met, friends that I haven't met, and um, it is a really good thing to do. So if you're on the fence, do it. Uh, my biggest piece of advice, I guess, because everybody like is like, oh, I kind of like to, but I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm scared, and I'm, yeah. Everybody's scared. Nobody knows what they're doing when they do it the first time. And if you are a little bit worried, then my advice is to go to some of your favorite floss tubers. Hopefully I'm one of them. But if not me, anybody, Pam and Steph, uh, the housewives, anybody that you watch regularly. And go and watch their first couple of videos. And you will see that everybody had a starting point. Everybody has grown into the people that you know and love. Nobody was like great the first time and you don't have to worry about it. Just go in and talk to your camera and be yourself. And that's what the floss tube community loves. You don't have to know how to edit. You don't have to be able to insert pictures and do whatever. I didn't even figure out how to like edit, put videos together until like my third or fourth video. And it was only because 
uh, somebody called me in the middle of my video and I ended up having to, um, to splice two pieces together. And that only happened because I didn't know how to set up my phone to make it so that the phone didn't ring. <laughs> um, so, you know, you learn as you go. I'm still learning. I don't know how to insert pictures. I mean, I guess I could figure it out if I had to. Um, and I have learned how to like, as I said, use iMovie and splice pieces together, but, um, I don't do any editing and I mean, I'm not a huge channel either, but, um, yeah, so do it. If, if you have any inclination at all to share your stitching out in the world on FlossTube, then do it because we all want to watch you. And then let me know you're doing it and I'll watch you and, um, and I'll tell people that you're doing it. So I don't have a lot to talk about today, actually. I didn't have a lot of whips. Um, I do have two finishes, which is very exciting. And not only that, they're both FFO'd, so that's even more exciting. Um, so, um, and I only have one other whip besides that. So I think I might show the whip first and save the FFO's because, I don't know, it feels a little anticlimactic to do it the other way when there's so few of them. Um, but before I did that, I just wanted to uh, say one thing. Well. Two things, first of all, weather report here in Southern California. It's been super hot this past week, um, kind of heading towards the 90s, and um, I'm dropping stuff, I'm always dropping stuff. Um, so yeah, we are definitely heading into summer. It's getting really hot here, and I know we've had like a heat advisory for the whole like West Coast, I think, and so if you guys, and, and I saw um, Annie, uh, Joyfield Stitcher was saying that, that Texas was ridiculously hot. So yeah, it's getting hot. Um, when I go to Vegas, it's going to be like 115 the whole week, but there's a, a lazy river and air conditioning. So we will be good. Um, oh, today's Father's Day too. Happy Father's Day to anybody, any fathers that are watching, or if you have Father's Day celebrations, give them a happy Father's Day for me. I have to say Father's Day, I lost my father when I was 10. And so Father's Day is kind of, kind of always passed by me without me noticing very much because I just didn't really have anybody to think about or celebrate with. I mean, I think about my father all the time. I don't need a special day. Um, but I was reminded when I talked to uh, Stacy this week and she was talking about the Father's Day meals that they were planning for my brother. So um, special happy Father's Day to my brother who I love with all my heart. And I think that he is really one of the best fathers I know. I'm, I think that he turned out to be just a really great dad and I'm really proud of him. Um, so I hope he has a really good filet tonight. He's actually, um, he wanted steak and Stacy's like, I don't know how to use the barbecue and it doesn't seem right that he has to cook his own dinner, but he doesn't mind. And in fact, this is kind of exciting. I think Logan, who is 13, told his dad he wants to learn how to barbecue so he's gonna get his first like lesson in how to grill today um, so maybe he can learn how to make the steaks for next year um, okay uh, the other cool thing that happened this week um, I had somebody make a comment on my my video last week um, and the uh, viewers name is Saturnalia which is kind of cool but anyway um, this person used the word Borahe. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's B-O-R-A-H-A-E to me. And I never heard that before. And I looked at it and I'm like, it didn't seem like it was a typo. So I looked it up and so cool. It's, it's a, um, it's a term that I guess was coined in, um, uh, K-pop. It's, it's from the band BTS, which is a Korean, uh, I think boy band, Korean pop band. Um, and Borahe also means I purple you, um, which, okay. So the, the person who first used it was Kim Taeyong, um, Bora, which means purple and Serenghe, which means I love you. So, so to people in this community, the Korean pop community, it means I will love you until the end because purple is the last color of the rainbow. Um, so it's just, it's really cute. I, I, and I mean, thank you so much because that just, it's so neat to get to hear a new term like that. And you know, I purple you, which means that I love you to the end. And I think that that's really great. So thank you very much for teaching me that. And I was really happy to be able to share it with everybody else. Okay. So that's about it for 
nothing well actually I did have a little health incident this week which is not a big deal now it was kind of scary at the time Wednesday in the middle of the night 4 a.m. I woke up I had a very a hypoglycemic incident which has never happened to me before um, since I've been you know controlling my uh, blood sugar and diabetes management I do take insulin and I've never had a low blood sugar incident but I woke up in the middle of the night and I was just drenched in sweat and I just felt very weird um, it's really hard to describe because it does affect your brain too so I was like confused and I just felt weird and luckily I had the the wherewithal to think I feel weird what is this and then I took my blood sugar and found out it was very low it was in the 60s it's never supposed to go below 70 because um, that's a little bit more dangerous if you get down into like the 50s that you could pass out and yeah it could be really bad so um I got up, I did have juice in the house, I drank some juice, I drank too much. Uh, I didn't at the time know like the 15-15 rule, which now I do, which is that you take 15 grams of, of sugar and wait 15 minutes and take it again. Um, but I got my, my sugars back up and then I was very sick the next day, um, digestively. So I don't know if like I was having some kind of like um, a little bit of food poisoning digestive problem and that caused the low blood sugar incident or if the low blood sugar incident caused the digestive distress but um, I was kind of sick the next day I stayed home from work and I was obsessively taking my blood sugar all day and it seemed a little bit off but but then it kind of normaled out till the end of the at the end of the day and I've been I've been fine for the rest of the time I did stay home this weekend instead of going to Aaron Stacy's just because I felt like I needed some extra rest and um and I'm fine. So, um, but now I'm a little bit more aware and um, I got some glucose tablets to have in my little medicine kit and to take in my purse. And um, I got another glucose monitor to keep in my purse because I'm just a little bit more aware because that was a little bit of a scary incident. And um, I don't want that to happen again um, without me being prepared. So, I guess it's good that it did happen uh, that I'm glad it kind of happened before vacation because I would not have wanted that to happen while I was on vacation without my regular stuff so that's one of the reasons I got like the glucose tablets and extra monitor and that kind of thing so anyway but I'm fine now and um, my friend that I've been talking about who is supposed to be visiting me for like the last month is finally coming today so she'll be here after I get the video up hopefully um, anyway, so yeah, I think that really is it for all of the life stuff and I can get on to my stitching now. <laughs> um, okay. So as I said, I have two FFOs, which I'm going to hold off for just a minute to show you. And I'll just show you the whip, the other whip that I worked on, which this week was Bella Chooks by Bella Filipina. Um, and as I said before, I see her as Morgana, my D&D &D character. We played D&D &D, uh, last night over Zoom, since I wasn't there this weekend. And here she is. So I worked a little bit more on her sort of her skin and hair right here. And then I decided to take a risk and count over and start on the edge. Um, so hopefully I counted correctly. I counted like three times, which still doesn't mean that it's cracked, but hopefully it is. And this is just done with DMC. This is on a, um, hand dyed by Rolanda fabric, which I just think this fabric is so gorgeous. And the colors just are such pretty colors. I mean, just straight DMC, but it's just looking really nice. And I like, I like the way the Bella Filipina patterns are put together. Um, I saw one review on 123 Stitch that somebody really hated it. Um, because they are kind of colored and some of the symbols are colored. And I don't like that in the fact that I can't make a working copy. Because I don't have a color copier or access to one easily. Um, but I like the way that there's kind of like chunks of color. So it is a lot of colors. But they're in chunks it's not like super confetti so um for me it's an easy easy pattern to stitch off of i do mark it off with a highlighter um 
they're not that easy. I mean, because it is a big solid piece of stitching for me, when I have solid like that, I need to mark it off. But I do enjoy it. Okay, so on to my FFOs. Are you excited? I'm excited to show you. Okay, so probably not too surprising what they are, but the first one is my counter canvas piece, Violet Nosegay. Oh, we're gonna get all kinds of glare. And I just put it in this frame that I got from Amazon. It was an inexpensive frame. I actually got this, um, oops, hold on. I have it in that tight. Okay. Um, I got it, I think, for Chester's Place originally. And, um, but Chester's Place isn't quite ready. I mean, it's nowhere near finished. And I thought that this would look really good in it, and I think it does. Um, most of my things that are framed are framed either in black or white. Um, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put this one yet, but um, I just think it came out really, really nice. And I love it. I do. I said this many times, but County Canvas is really fun to do. Um, if you like stitching cross stitch, then I think you should give County Canvas a try. I mean, it is a little bit different. It is not more difficult. Um, I find this kind of style where it's mostly the Goblin stitch, um, really relaxing to do the patterns, just really relaxing. And, um, the only thing is, is because you're going through mesh, sometimes doing too much of this can make my hand hurt because it's a little bit stiffer to get the needle through. Um, so I can't do it in the hugest amount of chunks because it does hurt a little bit. But anyway, so that is my first finish this week. Uh, second finish this week is the uh, Australian Mermaid that was um, a Mirabilia freebie that I got from the Mirabilia website. And I showed it to you last week and I worked on it a lot this week. I did all the beading and then I framed it and I surrounded the frame with shells. And that is my finish. I think she looks really pretty. So all the colors are ones that I just chose. I mean, they don't correlate very much to the actual pattern at all. Um, I did it all in silks and I did it on a piece of picture this plus Tempest, a 14 count um, piece. And unfortunately I was really stupid because when I put the silks on floss tags, I just took all the labels off and I can't tell you which company or what color number they were, but I have all kinds of silks. I have them from Dinky Does and from um, silks for you and, um, and, uh, water lilies. So it's all just a mixture. I changed her skin color to be kind of like under the sea gray instead of, you know, Caucasian skin color. Um, uh, I went with this kind of pinky color as the base color for her hair and then some browns to, um, to go with it. And then I chose two uh, variegated flosses for the main part of the tail and then um, two, like a dark purple, which you can barely see, but there's a dark purple kind of outline color. Um, and then the turquoise. And then I just pulled out my box of beads and found beads that I felt like kind of went. And then added those little shell, shell uh, beads, which I had in my little stash. I just love how it turned out. So what I did originally when I was working on this and I thought how I was going to finish it, I ended up, I bought this, which I kind of really liked this. This was from Amazon and I thought I would be able to put it around this and then I was going to decorate it with shells and I'm, I got some lavender, which I don't know if I'm going to get it because it's like one of those Amazon packages that got lost. So I got a refund, but then I got a big package yesterday and I think it might be it. I don't know. Anyway, I was going to use this little milk jug or whatever and it didn't work right it was a little bit too tall and it was a little bit too short it didn't like meet in the back and so I tried a couple different things and nothing nothing was like satisfying me and then um, I pulled out this sort of 
square-ish frame. So this is one of the frames. When I first started doing floss tube, I showed these frames. I had a set of five of them, I think. And um, now I'm down to just this really big one. And I said that these frames were crap. Don't buy them. Um, I got them off of Amazon. They're terrible as stitching hoops. Um, terrible because and it totally makes sense. It was like stupid to not think about it. The whole point of the round hoop is it keeps your, your tension because it's pulling on all edges, right? But the problem with this shape is you don't have the same tension, you know, going this way as you do this way and they don't keep it tight at all, at all, at all. So it was terrible for stitching, but I kept the five, the four or five frames or hoops because I thought I could use them as finishing pieces and that's actually what I did with this. So this is a, um, the green one. And I just, uh, put, put the stitching in the frame. I did a running stitch around it and pulled it tight, put some felt on the back, which probably is going to have to be glued because this felt is sticky back, but it's not sticky enough. And then I bought this box of shells to use with that milk jug. And so I had it and I thought, well, let me just start mosaicing them around the edge because I didn't really want the green plastic showing. And this is what I ended up with. I used E6000. I did it last night. I didn't have the window open, which is kind of probably stupid. Um, I have, I think, a little bit of a contact high from that. And um, this is what I ended up with. Which is really pretty, I think. So let me know what you guys think of my little artistic endeavor here with the shells. So she may live in my bathroom or she may live on my shelf over there if she fits. I don't know if she will or not, I'll have to see. She may be too tall, but if she fits, then she might live over there. So that's it. That's like my whips, all my work this week. Um, I do have one piece of haul. I told you guys about this last week. I ordered this from an Etsy shop. Which, did I keep it? I don't think I did. I did not keep the Etsy shop. But anyway, this is a, a print of hair, Black Pearl. I'm in mermaid mode, I guess, already this summer. Um, I saw this pattern. I don't even know who's who was stitching it, but I saw it from watching Floss Tube like several months ago. And I just loved it. And I went and kind of looked it up at the time, but I didn't buy it. And then, um, I don't know why I was thinking about it. I guess when I got the, the, um, Mirabilia Mermaid here, it made me remember it. And I went and looked it up again. And I realized that this isn't in stock really anywhere. It's, I guess, it's from 2018. So I guess it's considered, um, an older pattern now. I mean, that's not that long ago, right? It's only four years ago, but it's just not in stock anywhere. So I looked it up on eBay and there was one, but it was used and it was like the same price as if I just went and bought a new one. So I looked it up on Etsy and there was one shop that had it and I snagged it because I really do like her and I, I definitely want to stitch her. Um, so I have another order that's on its way from 123 Stitch, but um, I think I got a thing saying it went back to the seller because the address was wrong. I don't know. So who knows when I'm going to get that. Hopefully I will. But yeah, that's it. That was my haul. That was my whips. Um, I'm not really sure what my stitching plans are going to be for the rest of the week. Um, I mean, I'm still working on all of my Purple Passions projects. So, I mean, I have Lavender Roses to work on. I have Bellatrix to work on. Um, I have um, more of um, the Sampler of Shaw, which fits into that category. So I do have several projects. Um, I did get one finished. So maybe this like theme kind of focus thing works because it did get me a finish this month. Um, or yeah, this month <laughs> on a purple, purple passions project. And, um, as I said, the mermaid always also fit in cause I did it in shades of purple and turquoise. So it all fits. Um, I need to decide what projects I'm bringing on vacation. I'm always kind of amb 
well, I haven't gone on that many vacations since I started stitching. Um, but it seems like I'm either underestimate, I bring one thing and I'm bored and I don't want to stitch on it, or I overestimate and I bring like four things and then I don't stitch on hardly any of them. Um, but I think I'd rather overestimate than underestimate. Um, I think I'm going to have a good significant amount of stitching time on this, on this trip. Um, I just have that feeling and especially Stacy stitching now, which is the first vacation we've gone on where she was a stitcher too. Um, last time she had just started diamond painting when we, when we went on our vacation at the end of the year. And, um, we definitely had a couple diamond painting sessions with, uh, all of us kind of doing crafts. And since that time, their whole family has gotten a little bit more into crafts. My brother started doing models and, um, and is enjoying that and uh so yeah so i think that i definitely am going to bring two or three stitching projects um so that i have stuff to choose from and then maybe as far as diamond painting i might bring some of the little ornament things and i just ordered a notebook actually that's a diamond painted notebook that i think will be kind of fun to bring so i have to bring a couple of those little things with me um and uh yeah that's what I have to decide. I know my July theme is going to be stars and stripes, um, but I'm kind of making a play on that. I only have one patriotic um, chart, which is the starburst and stripes, and I'm definitely gonna bring that because I would like to work on that um, and um, get a good dent in that project this July, if not finish it. Um, but aside from that, that's the only like patriotic stitching that I have. So to go with the stars and the stripes theme, I'm also kind of sticking in things that have like a nighttime stars theme. So, um, I'm going to work on my star trick pattern, um, that I'm stitching for my brother, although it's only about a quarter done. So it's going to take forever for me to get that done for him. Um, and I have night walk down and night creatures. So, um, those are all going to fit into that stars theme for July. Um, but yeah, so those are the, those are the things I have to think about this week. Um, next week I'll probably show you all the things that I pick for July. And then as I said, the week after that, I'm going to have started my vacation. So, um, maybe I will try and do a stitch with me or something that I can upload, um, for that to take the place on that Sunday of, uh, what I would normally film. Um, of course that will be 4th of July. So I don't know how many of you are going to be watching Blast You on 4th of July anyway, but, um, Anyway, yeah, I think that that's it for this week, you guys. I don't have that much to talk about. So, gosh, I'm under half an hour still. Um, but um, I hope you guys all have a great week. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay cool and comfortable, whatever whatever temp you like. I hope that that's what you can achieve in your in your world. Um, I will enjoy the heat when I am by a pool. Uh, when I'm going to work, I don't like it so much. <laughs> but um, I hope you guys have a great day and a great rest of the week. And um, I look forward to hearing your comments. And I hope uh, I will see you again soon. And until I do, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.